Okay, I thought I would uh, get this on video. Uh, we're jumping in here sort of in the middle, but I thought it might be best to document this. Um, what you're seeing in front of you uh, are some sample pieces of PET that I've attempted to bond, and I think have successfully done so, uh, bond to the uh, carbon fiber fabric laminate that has been put over uh, these uh, fins uh, for the project. Uh, this is the same material as you see here. Uh, the, this is the, essentially the, the, the profile uh, of the fin. Um, they're, they're sort of heavy, which is a concern, uh, but we're uh, monitoring that in the design. Uh, the biggest concern was, you know, can we bond this enough to, to get the fiberglass around it? Because keep in mind, it's going to be encased in fiberglass. It's not like this has to survive any type of mock speed or anything like that. The research I did indicated that, that PET uh, and PLA, although this is PET, um, are, are very difficult to bond, uh, really impossible, um, except maybe for this product. Now, this is the DAP version, uh, Loctite. Uh, also makes a version that does the same thing. Essentially, it's a CA type glue, so it's sort of a universal bonding product. And this acts as a primer that you put on the plastic, really the plastic only. Uh, the epoxy should should bond fine, uh, the laminate used in the carbon fiber, but, but again, not so much to the PET. So they say 30 seconds, I think Loctite's product says 60 seconds, but it's it's relatively quick. And it's a matter of uh, uh, painting the, the plastic surface with, with the primer, the bonder, um, and then uh, putting CA. And that, that'll be a lot to put CA on, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, here are just the sample pieces. Uh, this actually came out of a prototype frame uh, that we were looking at to, to um, uh, reduce the weight. Decided ultimately just to use the, the solid here. This will be filled in with foam, uh, very much like the original plan on this. So, so here are the pieces. Um, this would be a, a, a leading or trailing edge piece. Uh, you can see right here we were holding it. We didn't get, didn't quite get glue in there, but the the purpose was just to test as it does it bond or not. This white powder uh, is the residue. Some magnifying glasses myself here. Hopefully, this is not too close. And you can see where a little bit of the glue um, came out from underneath the bottom. That's fine. I wanted to, to look at that. So, let's start by uh, putting some torque uh, on this uh, larger, thicker piece here. And I think what I'm just going to do is to start with is take my finger and see if it'll shear, because that's what we're interested in. Let's see what happens here. Now, I'm applying significant pressure. I think I can break it, but you can see what it's doing to my thumb. So I would say it's working to some degree, and this is just, you know, a very small piece. So we'll see if we can, see if we can break it. I don't want to break it. Or use a little stick here. I don't want to end up running my finger across a, a piece of broken plastic. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oops. I would say that stuff is on there. This is a, it's soft, it's a piece of pine, but it's just a, a sliver off of a, of a baseboard. Well, let's try it this way. Mostly just sheer. Two hands, finally two hands. And I, and I, see how I didn't want to do that with my fingers. So it did finally give. 
But when it gave, the whole piece didn't come off. And the pet, uh, the pet, and you can see the, the infill void in there. The pet ended up breaking before the rest of the bond came off. So maybe this, this half happened to be a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit stronger than the other half. And so I was not able to get, you know, that's on there, that's on there enough that I'm bleeding, folks. So I was not able to get that off. Now, if that's the case, this thin strip may be very difficult. We'll see if we can pry it up by chance. Now, I'm able to pry it up on the end where there's no glue. Once we get into where you've got a solid piece, it doesn't, it doesn't come up. You think about what we're doing here. We've got a knife blade in which we're applying shear directly to the joint. It looks like it'll come up eventually. Yeah. see what I'm doing here to make this happen. So that's pretty good. So you think about this, you know, you use a knife to cut something, uh, yeah, uh, and it doesn't look like we're necessarily, uh, say necessarily cutting a uh, pet. Uh, we are in some cases, like right there. But it looks like it bonds pretty good. So if, if it will bond like this and this on that type of piece, then you're going to have pretty good bond uh, on such a wide surface area like this. So it does look, and I don't want to do this, I'm going to end up cutting myself here. So it's not it's just not going to snap off. It's going to have to be uh, sheared uh, with a knife or something for it to come off. Let's see if we can use a knife to remove the rest of this. I don't have to grind it on. And this is hard. Best I can figure maybe on this edge was that since that was so thin as the knife went under it flexed and that aided to its release yeah because it's just not <laughs> so yeah the, it's clear that it's either flexing or breaking before the, the bond gives way that's pretty good actually On. That's what happened to that thinner piece. It's not as strong because the piece is not as strong. My guess is the the, the pet would start to melt. Break off. We can pop this off now. Now it's going to break. Gee whiz. Shall we? Yep, folks, I'm going to get out the hammer. Ooh, don't know where the piece went, but 
that the hammer did it. So yeah, so it's a, on a significant piece of pet, uh, it takes uh, a hammer to, to break the bond of this uh, rapid fuse product. Like I said, Lot Type has a has what appears to be an identical product, and you can see here it contains uh, uh, cyanoacrylate.